very little about malaria. So when my company sent me on a month-long business trip to Nigeria, I knew that I was going to have to dig into the subject. I went to see a travel doctor, and she told me that if I came down with the malaria symptoms while in Nigeria, the doctors there would be able to treat me without any problem. Back home, though, it is a different story. People still die of malaria in non-malarious regions because they're not diagnosed quickly enough. So I took my preventive treatment religiously. I wore mosquito repellent on my skin and on my clothes, especially when I was going out at night. Finally, my company gave me a malaria survival kit. That kit was basically to be used once I'd returned from Nigeria or from a malaria endemic region. And I, had, and I was to bring the kit to my doctor as soon as I came down with the symptoms of malaria. Needless to say, I had only been back for two days when I started feeling feverish, when I started vomiting, and when I started having backaches. All of these symptoms of malaria. Assuming the worst, and with my kit in my hand, I left for the hospital. What do you know about malaria? Did you know that it's the number one insect transmitted disease in the world? and that it kills between one and three million people every year. Did you know that you run the greatest risk of death, not when you're in a malaria zone, but when you leave it? In fact, malaria is both a preventable and curable illness, yet it continues to elude international health programs designed to eradicate the disease. Sub-Saharan Africa is particularly affected, harboring as it does a form of malaria that can kill you. And let me repeat, Malaria may not declare itself until after you leave a malaria zone, making it particularly dangerous. Fighting malaria begins with you. Preventing infection in humans is the best way to roll back the spread of the disease. Moreover, the World Health Organization has established clear guidelines for preventing malaria in individuals. We call it the ABCD Action Plan for Malaria Protection. This program provides a set of preventive measures that you can take when living, working, or traveling in a malaria region. The ABCD Action Plan safeguards your health when you're in a malaria zone and protects you when you come home. The first step of the plan is A for awareness. Learn how you can become infected and where you are at risk. I had a few ideas about malaria, but was unsure of what the real risks were, so I consulted a travel doctor. The Life Cycle of the Malaria Parasite Understanding malaria transmissions will help you protect yourself and eliminate an essential part of the infection cycle. Mosquitoes don't begin life carrying the malaria parasite, but pick it up from already infected humans. Malaria is transmitted by a particular female mosquito called the Anopheles mosquito. Now when female Anopheles mosquitoes feed on infected humans, they ingest the malarial microorganism or parasite, which makes its way to the mosquito gut, reproduces, and ends in the salivary glands where it remains until the mosquito bites again, sending the parasite into the new victim's bloodstream and liver. The victim has no symptoms at first, but the parasites begin to multiply after 7 to 14 days, though sometimes longer, the parasites begin to leave the liver. Each targets a red blood cell and invades it. Once inside, the parasite multiplies very rapidly, destroying the cell in the process. In a few hours to a few days, a multitude of parasites is released and the cycle repeats and intensifies. As large numbers of red cells are destroyed, the symptoms of malaria begin to appear and can escalate very quickly. Left unchecked, the malaria parasites can cause flu-like discomfort or long-term illness, coma, kidney failure, or in some cases, death. The five most common and constant malaria symptoms are fever, headache, chills, nausea, and vomiting. Malaria types and risks. Different types of malaria appear in different parts of the world and pose very different levels of risk. We're most concerned with the only potentially fatal parasite, Falcipora malaria, 
which provoke serious symptoms anywhere from one week to one month after exposure. Falciparum malaria can be contracted in Africa and the Asian Pacific. The other three non-life-threatening forms of malaria are Vivax, Ovali, and Malariae. They pose a moderate risk in Southeast Asia and parts of Central and South America, where falciparum illness is uncommon. But symptoms can appear a year or more after exposure and can result in debilitating illness. The B in our action plan is for bites. It's simple. No bites, no malaria. Protect yourself from mosquito bites with clothing and insecticide. I wore insect repellent on my clothes and on my skin, especially if I was out at night. The Anopheles is a small mosquito that makes no noise as it flies and doesn't hurt when it bites, so you may be bit without knowing it. To protect yourself, treat your clothing with permethrin-based insecticide and wear skin repellent containing DEET. This is the only proven way of protecting yourself against nearly 100% of potential mosquito bites. Long pants, long sleeves, socks and shoes constitute a physical barrier to mosquito bites. But because they can still bite through clothing, permethrin adds a chemical repellent that keeps them away. On exposed areas of skin, use repellents with 30 to 50 percent DEET. The higher the concentration of the DEET, the longer the repellent will work. For children, use lesser concentrations, such as 15 percent. You may also opt for all natural repellents with citridiol, recently approved by the American Food and Drug Administration. Be sure to apply a sufficient, even coat of repellent on the skin. All areas left uncovered will remain vulnerable to bites. Anopheles mosquitoes feed between sunset and sunrise, so protect your sleeping areas with window screens and bed nets. Insecticide-treated bed nets not only repel mosquitoes, they kill them. And today, special impregnation techniques make long-lasting bed nets insecticide effective for up to five years. Other bed nets need to be treated every six months. Despite the best bite prevention, you may still be exposed to malaria. That's why preventive treatment or chemoprophylaxis is the C in our ABCD plan. Take preventive medication as directed by your doctor. I took my preventive treatment religiously with no real problem. Regular low doses of chemoprophylaxis helps maintain a constant concentration of anti-malarial medication in the bloodstream where it kills parasites before they can cause symptoms and helps prevent the infection from developing into a serious illness. Always seek professional medical advice on which medicines to take according to the area of travel and their potential side effects. Pregnant women or women considering pregnancy should see their personal physician to find out which medicines are available. Expatriates or long-term residents in malaria zones are not exempt to preventive treatment. You may have been infected with malaria before, but this does not make you immune to the serious consequences of malaria in a new infection. Remember, constant preventive treatment is essential to protecting your health. Unless you have spent your entire life in a malaria zone, you have no significant level of immunity. So although they'll need prompt curative treatment of symptoms in order to prevent the illness from becoming more severe, Individuals with partial immunity should not take chemoprophylaxis, or else what natural protection they have will be lost. Let's look at the different types of chemoprophylaxis currently in use. Malarone, a combination drug, is one of the most effective medicines you can take to prevent the potentially life-threatening falciparum malaria. You should take the proper dose of malarone every day at the same time with food. Start two days before travel and continue seven days after returning from the malarious region. This dosing schedule is particularly well adapted to frequent travelers or regularly rotating employees. Possible side effects may include headache, fever, muscle aches, backache, abdominal pains, 
and diarrhea. Some may also experience flu-like symptoms. Larium, a methylquin, is another highly effective form of protection against falciparum malaria. With methylquin, take the specified dose once a week, always with food. Begin one to two weeks before travel and continue for four weeks after returning from the malarious region. This dosing schedule is particularly well suited to those on extended assignment in malarious regions. Serious adverse effects to methylquin are rare, occurring in only about 3 to 4 percent of long-term users. Less serious side effects may occur more frequently, including nausea, dizziness, insomnia, vomiting, and abnormal dreams. These side effects usually disappear after a few doses. Doxycycline is better known as an antibiotic, but it's 90 percent effective as a chemoprophylactic for malaria. But it should not be taken by pregnant women nor by children under the age of eight. It's best tolerated when taken daily with food, beginning two days before travel and continuing four weeks after returning from a malarious region. It is important to take doxycycline every day. Missed doses will expose you to malaria infection. Minor adverse effects are not uncommon and may include stomach cramps, diarrhea, esophageal ulcers, sensitivity to light, and secondary yeast infections. The chloroquine proguanol combination has been a mainstay for many years, but because of growing resistance of the falciparum parasite to the drug, it is no longer recommended. The risk of falling ill is always present. The last step in our action plan for malaria protection is the one that may save your life. D for diagnose early. At the first sign of any malaria symptoms accompanied by fever, seek medical attention immediately. I wasn't sure if it was malaria or not, so I assumed the worst. Keep in mind, there are cases of malaria symptoms occurring one year after travel. So if you experience headache, fever, chills, nausea, and or vomiting within this time frame, you should seek medical attention immediately, and you should tell your health care provider that you've been in a malaria zone recently. Headache, fever, chills, nausea, and or vomiting. We call these symptoms nonspecific because they're not necessarily caused by malaria, and secondly, they resemble flu symptoms. In fact, outside a malaria zone, healthcare professionals are rarely confronted with malaria cases, and sometimes a doctor is simply unavailable. In either case, use a standby malaria diagnostic and treatment kit. It may not be malaria, but if it is, the sooner you know the better. And this kit contains rapid malaria tests and a full treatment of quartum, recommended by the World Health Organization as the most effective treatment against malaria infection. Bring the kit to the doctor, but if none is available, test yourself. Start the treatment immediately until, in fact, you can consult a physician. Here's a little test on the important points of this presentation. True or false? Anopheles mosquitoes feed on infected humans and transmit malaria to others. They bite more frequently from dusk till dawn than during the day. True. You can die from malaria. True. Falciparum malaria is the most serious form of malaria. It can result in kidney failure and coma, and can even lead to death. If I don't hear any mosquitoes or feel them bite, I'm probably not being exposed to malaria. False. The Anopheles is a stealth malaria carrier. You will not hear it or feel it biting you. Protection at all times is essential. Malaria symptoms begin within 24 hours of the mosquito bite. False. Usually, symptoms occur within 7 to 14 days of the infectious bite. 
after parasites emerge from the liver and begin to invade red blood cells. Sometimes symptoms may take much longer to appear. Most people suffer serious side effects from taking antimalarial drugs. False. Some people experience mild side effects or none at all. Serious side effects are possible, but rare. All anti-malarial drugs can be discontinued as soon as the traveler returns home. False. Anti-malarial drugs may be required from one to four weeks after returning home, depending on the drug. Always follow your physician or travel health advisor's instructions. Travelers returning from a malarious region should contact their physician or go to the emergency room immediately if fever occurs. True. You should seek medical attention immediately. Inform the health care provider of your recent travels so that blood tests for malaria can be performed. I am happy and relieved to say that it wasn't malaria. So the ABCD plan worked for me and I am convinced that it's the best way to fight malaria. You understand now that malaria is a serious disease, but control and prevention can be as easy as ABCD. A for awareness, know the risks. B for bites, protect yourself. C for chemoprophylaxis, take your treatment as directed. And D for diagnosis, the earlier the better. Thank you for listening and remember these important precautions against malaria.